Good evening. Welcome to Omni Bro Live. It's Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. I'm here solo because uh, I'm the only one that's ever on time. So it's my show. I can do whatever the heck I want. Let's talk about Harley Quinn. Uh, Harley Quinn is awesome. The book Harleen is great. You should totally read it. Fantastic story, deep in depth. Uh, deep in depth look at Harleen Quinzel, the doctor. There's not really that much Harley Quinn herself in it. It's a lot of Harleen Quinzel. Uh, Stepan Sashaj does a great job. There's a weekend geekdom. I'm hey. changing the show. We're talking about hey, the only one on time. I know. I know. I'm terrible. Sorry. I didn't say you were terrible. I just said I was the only one on time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so here are more pictures of the great art and the fabulous writing goes in depth, fleshes her out fully as a person. And if you want more, uh, review and analysis, go to Omni Dog's Vault, where there's a Batter Days in the Batcave, all about Harleen, which is a my book of the year so far. Yes, I'm aware we're only at March 2nd, but it's my book of the year. Nothing wrong with that. What's your book of the year? Uh, I don't know. Uh, my Hair Academia? I don't know. Okay. That's I haven't cool. read much. I haven't read much, so... You haven't read much? I mean, I've read older stuff, you know, but nothing like that came out in 2020 so far. So, Okay, that's cool. This is Geo, by the way, from A Week in Geekdom. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Uh, excited to talk about comics and hang out with some awesome people after a terrible day. So, Oh, I'm sorry you had a terrible day. Eh, you know. Stuff happens, but you gotta keep going. Here's the untimely Omar. Two minutes. I think I get like what? I have a PhD in uh, comics, so I get like what? Fifteen minutes leeway. You don't get jack diddly wah from me. I was here on my own, vamping. Wow. Why are you so angry, man? I'm here. <laughs> you have, you haven't seen me angry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would I like you when you're angry? Yeah, actually, Maybe. I'm blast when I'm angry, dude. How many times do I piss you off on a monthly basis? Don't even, don't even. On a monthly, like I do, a daily monthly basis. basis, I know daily I make basis. <laughs> uh, um, now that we have enough people in the chat and watching us, we can talk about InStockTrades.com. Yeah, where you can get your collected editions up to fifty percent off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. There's always an Omnibros Live discount code every quarter. If you order $50 or more in books in the United States, you get free shipping. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. And that 2% is going to come in handy when I tell you about a certain something that somebody's going to be pretty excited about. He's already been weeping about it on his channel. <laughs> uh, first of all, I don't cry, okay? That is, I sweat. <laughs> Man manly I sweat. Manly I sweat. Yes, sir. Uh, I will accept that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so what what are we what are we talking about today, fellas? We got halls, reads. I don't have much halls. I've done a ton of reading though. Oh, that's a good. Ton of reading. My halls get here probably tomorrow or the day after. Uh, we can do halls, reads, and then uh, previews. If yeah. You yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Big, big Did either of you hauled at all? Me? Uh, you haven't hauled, Omar. How about you, Geekdom? Mine yeah. comes at, uh, in a couple of days, but I'm okay. Go, sorry, Gio, go ahead. 
Uh, I, I got to give a shout out to Omar and his no. channel, The Airman Condition, for hooking me up. You don't have to. I, yeah, I don't you have don't to. Have to. All right, you I'll stay quiet you, then. It's okay. You don't have. I won't anything. say anything, man. You don't have to do anything. I didn't. I didn't send him an X Men box set or anything like that, man. <laughs> Can you imagine if I, like, hey, here it is, and I come out with a fake cardboard or something? You know how much like that would cost me to ship. That thing is huge. <laughs> uh, no, but you were generous enough to uh, send me some really cool books. I'm not going to show everything because I'm lazy, but I just pulled this <laughs> off the shelf. Uh, thank you so much, man. This really means a lot to me. It's the first Hulk book I own, so I'm really Ooh. excited about it. So it's the Immortal Hulk, Volume 1, Oversized Hardcover. Thank you. Man. Yeah, I can't wait for you to read that, man. That was yeah. a really great book in 2019 that I got to read. I agree. I agree. So I hope, you. You I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So that, that, that's, uh, yeah, some other books. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> okay. I posted the whole the full haul video on my channel, so I don't want to, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, do what you need to do. <laughs> don't want to sound ungrateful or anything like that. Oh, we show this comment. Cut the shit and tell us what's oh, in wow. Danny X Men Four, Omar. I really don't know, guys. I, I don't know. All I know is the things of September in the next couple of weeks are uh, they're doing the catalog, updating the catalog. So I will find out, and as soon as I do. You all will. So, yeah, I'm excited about that, too. I'm excited to know what is going to be orphaned for an Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 5. <laughs> Very excited. I swear, Nate. He doesn't believe me. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> uh, okay. so what, about, what about you, uh, Jess? Any more surprises? Uh, are we talking about halls? Yeah, you got any more of those weak ass small halls? Oh, weak ass! How dare you? Um, I was just kidding, man. I know. You're God, you're a comedian. Um, from Mike Ashley, my buddy. Yeah. I got an awesome deal on. Wait, I'm gonna highlight myself because these books are so awesome. <laughs> can, can, you, can, you, can you highlight? Dave K's comment really quick. Oh, yeah, just like no, uh, that. The one, <laughs> oh, right the, other one? Uh, the one is funny. Um, so I do let, like, uh, <laughs> I do give Jess and these guys the heads up, like, when they do a show on Sunday. I don't, yeah. Once it's out there, I was like, yeah, man, feel free to share. It's not a big deal. It's cool. That's a generous attitude, I think. I'm a generous dude. Hell yeah. Um, Some, sometimes. I got the best of Vampirilla Ooh. Master Series Omnibus. Okay. Cool. These are all Dynamite. Vampirilla, the Dynamite Years. I like These that cover. Campbell cover. Yep. These are all in glorious color. And the art, I'm trying to balance these on my lap. The art is really great in all these Vampirella books. Those are big, right? Like real thick yeah. books. Big thick jobbers. Big thick what? Jobbers. Jobbers. Don't start. I've never heard that term. I haven't said anything. Same Some here. Volume two, the Dynamite Years. That's a big jobber, also. Great art. How many um, are there? Volume three, Omnibus, featuring the entire. Nancy Collins run, and then a Gail Simone book, the complete saga of Swords of Sorrow. Ooh. Oh yeah, Maddie loves that thing. Ooh, good. It's a crossover event. Yeah, I see that. It looks like it's got the Green Hornet in it. Yeah, because he's a dynamite. Well, he's owned by dynamite in Carmen San Diego. Okay. I'm Carmen kidding. San I don't Diego. know. I'm kidding. I don't know if that's oh. Carmen San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I would totally believe it. I haven't read these books yet. I didn't know they're beautiful. Oh, you you haven't read any dynamite? I those books I haven't. Yeah, I've read dynamite. Okay, I was gonna say, I know you I know you have. Yeah. Um I'm um, hope 
I'm hoping that uh, we start. I'm gonna try to be. I'm gonna try to push for these uh, big, thick collections of classic Red Sonia in omnibus format, like classic Marvel omnibus format from them. I think they would sell really well, especially on the t- tail end of Conan selling well. So I'm, I'm hoping Dynamite can do something like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make that a big push of mine because I love to have all this stuff, man. All this Robert E. Howard, Roy Thomas stuff, Marvel years in omnibus format in one shelf. I hate the fact that you know the the we have big fat uh, oversized hardcovers and then we have these smaller trades and. That that really, I was like, no, we gotta have this all in one thing. Uh, and I got what else you got from uh, InkStockTrades.com. I got Sandman presents House of Whispers Volume Two. I haven't read that at all. I read Volume One and liked it enough to get Volume Two. That looks pretty cool. Uh, this was a blind buy. Because it's by Cullen Bunn, and it sounded great. That that man writes a comic book like a day. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how he does it. It looks scary. Roman Roman Black is the moribund patriarch of a family of powerful sorcerers. (laughs) Sold. (laughs) Uh, Gwenpool Strikes Back by our gal. uh, Kelly. Leah, right? Is it Uh, Leah Willen? Oh, yeah. Leah Leah Willen. Yeah. 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 So I got that. And Berserker Unbound by Jeff Lemire. This was a 50% off book. I heard Berserk and I got excited. Same word. Berserk Volume 2 because I love Volume 1 so much. Mike Diodato Art. (laughs) Deodato. On the Beauty. Deodato. Deodato. Deodato Jr. Deodato Jr. That what kind of accent was that? <laughs> uh, my three-year-old accent. Don't try and say I'm a racist. Oh, uh, spoilers, dude. That's a spoiler page. I'm kidding. I you love don't know man. anything about that book. <laughs> I've read it. <laughs> you have not. Have I, review, I reviewed it on my channel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you damn liar. God, look at you double dipping with that Carnage classic. I did not. I checked the omnibus first. Ah, <laughs> it's Carnage in the classic. It's in the Marvel v- or Spider-Man versus uh, Venom omnibus. It is not. It is. The Carnage. Oh, Every single page in that book is not in the Spider-Man versus Venom omnibus. No. I checked everything. Don't mess with me. <laughs> I think you <laughs> asked me. I think you asked me and I told you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you told me to buy it. And I got some variant covers. Oh, oh show them off. Let me see them. Okay. Oh, I, I see that. Even, I can't even pronounce the artist's name. It's like Kale Ning, uh, but they're awesome. From the Giant X Men special. Nice. You got two nice. of them. You got a Virgin one. I got a Virgin and a can't, Trade. Can't believe I'm using these damn terms these days. <laughs> and then the extra special one. Oh, Ooh. I like that one. I know, right? Look at Jean. Mm-hmm. They are works of art. They are. You know that. What do you do with those? You gonna CGC them? Um, comic like or put them on your... Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. I, I I'm think not... there are actually frames for CGC books now, but I'd rather just frame these as they are in those comic book frames. Are CGC books in a frame to begin with? I don't know that you can hang them. Yeah, you can't hang them. Watch me put a fucking nail through that CGC. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not when it's not N G U Y E N Win. His his name is literally like N G A. His last name. Oh, dude, that's. Uh, or no, I don't. I it's I don't, like I, I, something. I, I am just kidding, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Know how to it. <laughs> why? Why would I? <laughs> why would you ask me? I, I'm not. Jess, this is a good question. Where do you get your singles from? Uh, all over the place. He Quite picks frankly. them up at these uh, low end bars. That's where <laughs> yeah. <you can> <laughs> uh, yeah. Usually the uh, the hookers give them to me after I'm done with them. Costco. Uh, I Whoa. get them. Not even where I was going. 
I get them from Eastside Comics, Unknown <laughs> Comics, Golden Apple Comics, 789 Comics, and uh, I closed my email. Uh, Elite Comics. Cool. Oh, Elite Comics in uh, Indianapolis? Yeah, are they a sponsor of yours too? No, I just know the guy, and um, I went to his shop, and I was going to do a video of his store, but the day, like, they were moving. He really good dude that runs it. Really good prices. Not just on that, but also on used Omnis. If you're ever in Indianapolis area, big shout out to Elite Comics. They're, they're a great store. Yeah, I just ordered something from him yesterday. Uh, Larry says the G is silent. Okay, nah. Nah, man. Nah, man. That sounds good. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what I hauled. Now, now highlight Freddy Alonzo's comment. Yeah. Further confused Omni Dog. My sister had a boyfriend last name Ng Ng. He swore it was pronounced Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm sorry for laughing. <laughs> sorry. That would confuse the hell out of Jess. He's confused already. I'm confused just in general. I uh, yeah, I I don't. Uh... Oh, and I also get direct from Art Germ. He sells uh, several artists on his page. Ooh. Oh 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 oh! Uh, hi Highlight Taylor Mitchell's uh, comment. This is really funny. How was Ravens Comics in Indianapolis? The guy in his house. It literally felt like I was walking into a dude's house. Like, that's what it felt like. And I, I showed it on my video. Like, I couldn't show the mess that he was like, please don't film this area. And I'm like, of course. Uh, it's just, so that, a, it's funny. A it was a store. And I'm like, I could open that up in my basement. You could. <laughs> I just, I'll hang up a handmade sign, like on poster board outside. <laughs> Omar's Comics. The Uncanny Omar's Comics. No, I got to come up with something good. I don't know. Maybe like near main conditioners. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought that was pretty. I love one of my favorite things when I used to travel for work was going to different comic book stores because I would find the coolest places sometimes. And then, you know, you have the average average places that has everything. But my favorite kind of shops were the kind of places that were so disorganized that I love looking for hours in there and then finding something I was looking for or finding something I didn't even know I wanted. Those are the kind of experiences that I love having. Like, uh, I, perfect but, name. Captain Smart Comics. Comics. Captain, Captain Smart, Smart Comics, Comics, Comics. Comics. I like that. <laughs> Omni Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Okay, Boomer. He's a Gen Xer. I am a Gen Xer. Jess is the one with all the money. My generation ain't going to have any Social Security. We're stacking it all up, dude. Yeah, my social security is paying for just the CGC books and variants. <laughs> <laughs> I call that an even trade. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. You got it, brother. Uh, okay, so that was Halls. And Ooh. Omar, you said you did a lot of reading. I did a ton of reading. I, uh, I went camping with some buddies this weekend, and I'm I'm not How a fan. Though? Did you shoot guns? We shot guns. We drank whiskey. We sat around a campfire telling ghost stories. One of those. Oh, I love it. One, of, yeah, uh, ghost stories. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not much of a camper, so I took a bunch of comics with me to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I took my pad, my tablet to read. You know, while I was there, so I read. Um, I read Black Widow. Actually, I got him here with me because I was going to do an overview tomorrow. Because this, this is, I had to remind myself why this is my favorite Black Widow story, and that is by Mark Wade. Absolutely. I wish, I wish that Marvel had released this in OHC, but I love, love. Uh, we had some uh, 20s and 12s. And, Are you uh, talking about guns? Forty-five. What? Yeah, Aaron was asking what kind of guns, what oh. kind of whiskey. Uh, what was that called? Somebody brought up. Uh, some of these guys make a lot of money, so some of these guys brought some Elmer T. Lee. I brought like 
I don't know, that rot gut ancient age shit that sold in a plastic bottle. And then I read, let me see, digitally I've been re catching up on the X-Men stuff that's been coming out. Um, and then I read this for my channel because we're doing old reader, new reader on Pride of Baghdad tomorrow. Oh, God, oh. what a killer. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Uh, I read Naomi, volume one, with oh, my daughter. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. The Brian Michael Bendis book. Mm -hmm. My daughter and I are going to review it on the channel. She's, I think she read it before I did. Um, I read some Deadpool because I was catching up on Deadpool. And then uh, I started reading some of the Timeless Greatest Submariner post, uh, what's it called? Post War Years. So, oh, and I did take one of the X Men hardcovers with me, the, the Lost Years, because I wanted to read a little bit of what was in there. Camping? No, I took it out with me. Like I didn't leave. I left that in the car. That was for the car ride. Oh, this one here. Oh, yeah. So it's very similar to the uh, Epic Collection. Uh, what volume was that? Volume. S oh boy, four, five. I've had it somewhere down here. I don't have that Epic Collection. But this one here. There's a Epic Collection that collected like a lot of the. It's not in the omnibus format, right? You can take me off of the big screen, but um, gladly. So it's not in the omnibus format, and what it is is those years that the X Men line was canceled, but the characters appeared everywhere else. So you had like you know, it's got like the first appearance of Beast turning into the Blue Beast, right? How Beast went from man to to real Beast. This right here, the Amazing Adventures. Stuff like that. This stuff right here was actually um, left out of the omnibus, and I wish they had put it in there in an omnibus format. But instead, we got an epic, so I'm glad that they left it in here in the box set. So, this is stuff that like I I've only read once or twice. I read some Punisher by Garth Ennis, the Max series, which is still solid. Wow, you were a reading machine. I yeah, was reading. A ton, I'm impressed. Man. I was reading a ton. I was gone for three days, man. A lot of driving, and I read, you know, pretty quick. So uh, that's it, though. That is all. Where are you, know you what bitch? What's up? Where are you, are you, bitch? Are you going to an in and out? I just, uh, I felt bad. I kind of left you guys out. Uh, don't have any idea what you're saying. Okay, we. Uh, terrible, actually. We can see you, but we can't really we can hear see you. you. But we can't really hear you. Yeah, sorry. Do not get in a wreck. Always darkest before the dawn. Thank you, Justin Page. Okay. Did you read anything yeah. else? Nope. That's it, man. That is it. You all right, Gabe? Can you hear us? <laughs> no. All right, I guess not. Maybe he can. Uh, Omar was reading X-Men Omni Volume 4 secretly. I wish. What uh, about you guys? What did you what did read? You read uh, uh, G.L.? Uh I haven't read this, but somebody told me, hey, you should get this. I, I, I have no idea what this is. Uh, I got it on my uh, tablet. Gnome <laughs> Hole? It's free? <laughs> it's a free comic book? And I said, whatever, I'll get it. I don't know what... I, seriously, this is the first time I'm opening it right now, so I don't. I have no idea what it's about. So if you are if you want to read something free, I, I hear it's good. I don't know. Gnome Hole. <laughs> I... I don't know. Is there anything a, you actually read? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Is there anything you actually read? <laughs> wow. you're, so, you're so condescending. Uh, <laughs> he was just talking about Gnome Hole. <laughs> but he hadn't read it yet. I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. For the manga haters, uh, I read uh, My Hair Academia Volume 20, 23 and Dr. Stone Volume 9. So I'm up to date with these releases. Actually, no, I'm still missing uh, a volume of Dr. Stone, but I'm up, sort of up to date. It's been fun. And eventually, whenever I get around to filming it, 
I, I, I do want to, I am making a video about this because I did read it. Oh, the nail, the deluxe oh, edition. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. That's some good stuff. Yeah. That yeah. is. Alan Davis. That's the deluxe edition? Mm hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's the one that's coming out this month, right? No, the, this month is, uh, it's the Nell Complete Collection. So it's mm -hmm. got both the Nell and other Nell. Does and that one have both? Nail. No, this one only has the Nell. Gotcha. But in oversized uh, format. I love that story. Yeah. That's, a, that's uh, pretty much it. Okay. All right. All right, Omni Dogs Vault. <laughs> By the way, I just want to remind people in the chat to please hit that like button. If you, if you enjoy the content of this, this channel right here. Even if you don't. Even if you're, even if you're hating it. Yeah, help us out. Give it a like. Yeah, it, it won't cost you anything. For every like we receive, three dollars and fifty-five cents. Well, at least just us <laughs> added to his social security fund that he gets yeah. a check from the government. Thank you. It's supplementary. Thank you, Thank you for your sacrifices. All right. Now, I read. Yoink. <clears throat> For Crime Corner with Taylor Brown, I read the four volumes of Stumptown by Greg Rucka. What did you think? I loved volumes one and two, thought volume three was okay, and then volume four, I, I like coffee, so that was all interesting to me. It was all about coffee. Um, so I liked it. But I, I love, love, loved volume one especially. Um, it's dealing with Dex Perios, the proprietor of Stumptown Investigations. The first uh, book, she gets um, into debt at the casino, and the head of the casino has her look for her da uh, uh, granddaughter, blah, 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 blah. And it leads to all kinds of serial complications. Stumptown, I highly recommend all four volumes, but especially volumes one and two. Um, volume three was just all about soccer and i i know greg Ruck is a big soccer fan and i i just i just thought it was good he loves football football right and um apparently there's a big rivalry between portland and seattle and in the major league soccer and in uh intramural soccer so uh that that's what the volume three was all about and the and the crime that she was investigating so um that one didn't grab me as much as one three and four uh one two and four did um then uh for omnicat we read each other's recommendations and she read my recommendations and i read some of hers so the first one i read was on a sunbeam by tilly walden Nice. I highly recommend. This is about a. This is set far in the future when the outer reaches of the galaxy have been explored and colonized, and they travel in spaceships. It's about a girl who. Um, it, it goes back and forwards in time to her time in a prestigious high school, and then it goes back to the present. Her time in. Uh, a work crew where they go around repairing old rundown uh, buildings on uh, abandoned planets and things where they're gonna like turn 10 million year old churches into condos and apartments and she has to help fix them up for that. And it's about her love interest in high school, uh, a girl uh, that comes from the farthest reaches of the galaxy called the Steps. Um, and what she has to do to go through to be reunited with her. And I thought this book was great. I loved this book. Highly recommend it. Maddie absolutely loves that book. But she really doesn't have to sell me on Tilly Walden. Yeah. It's great. Everything. I agree. Or any news on Uncanny X-Men Volume 5. Boy, you guys are fast. <laughs> Volume 5. Wow. <laughs> Damn. You guys um, are fast. Then I read Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me, Mariko Tamaki. Uh, this was set in Berkeley. A girl and her um, lover in high school, her girlfriend, this girl and her girlfriend in high school, Laura Dean is very popular. 
and she keeps breaking up with this chick and this chick keeps going back to her um and she ignores her best friend who's uh, very, a very cute and fun character um it has a great ending and I thought it was a good representation of the LBGTQ BLT community. It was a great read. I enjoyed it. I, I didn't enjoy it as much as on a sunbeam, but I still enjoyed it and can recommend it. Joe Chip, Jess is never all alone. I'm not alone. I'm just showing my shit. Gross. Showing my stuff. <laughs> and then I finally... What? Read- how did you find that? Oh, it's not a haul. Sorry. I was like, I've been looking for that. I unsealed it for the first time ever this week. Essex County is now in my top 13 books. I I don't know why I didn't read this sooner. I'll tell Everybody you why. Drop everything they're doing right now and read Essex County by Jeff Lemire. I now see why everyone loves it so much. This is pretty much the perfect book. Um, Fully fleshed out characters, long, beautiful, interesting stories, poignant, heartbreaking, tragic, uh, exhilarating, interesting. I can't say enough about Essex County. I have a question for you. This is now in my top 13 books. This is God on his question because you and I both have the same problem. We do not like Jeff Lemire's art. Did yeah. that bother you at all? Or was the story so strong that you pushed yourself through? Because, I mean, I feel the way that way about Sweet Tooth. I felt the story was strong enough to keep me reading. But, man, that artwork was rough. And I know, I know, you know, we're one of the few. There are a lot of people that love his artwork. But, um, yeah, one of those one of those things I never really can get through is his art. Um. I felt the same way as I did about Sweet Tooth. The story was so strong that the okay. art was adequate. Okay, cool, cool. It, and it conveyed it conveyed the emotions of the book well enough that it wasn't a distraction. Awesome. But I, I agree. I, I do have a. I'm not a big Lemire artist fan, but his writing in this book is a plus plus. So I, as you say, I can best thing he's ever written. That you've read? Well, that I've read, yeah. Yeah, you can say that. That's cool. Yeah. I will look forward to reading it and finding a copy. Still can't find a copy. I've been looking for over a year now. Is that the one that comes with a card? A baseball card Uh, or a hockey card? There were only like 50 of those made, and Adam Maximilian has like 20 of them. Really? (laughs) He really likes Jeff Lemire or he really likes Essex County? He loves Essex County. I'm not exaggerating when I say he has like five or six copies of these of this book like this and then he has the one in 50 with the with the uh hockey card in it that's so rare gotcha Um, wow yeah oh super chat super chat for geo and omar whoops sorry um uh do you think lone wolf and cub omnis will get a reprint or should i keep hunting them keep never stop hunting yeah i agree Keep but looking for them. Recently, they they just did the Kurosagi Corpse reprints on Omnis, and those Omnis have been out of print for four years. Mm-hmm. So anything is possible with Dark Horse. They still own the rights, so they easily could reprint them. But as of right now, they haven't stated anything. So yeah. and the, and and manga is one of those things that, for the most part, if it's a popular enough series, they will reprint. Mm-hmm. But on obscure titles, you probably not. But I mean, this is Lone Wolf and Cub. Right, it's yeah. it's one of the their their most popular titles. Rest assured, Berserk Deluxe Editions will never go out of print. They'll go out of stock, but never out of print. Mm-hmm. I agree. Thank you for the super chat, though. Yeah, That's thank you very much. You. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I am yeah. envious of that Essex County, actually. Yeah, me too, Jess. Yeah. I have Next the time uh, I- regular edition. Next time yeah. I come to Baltimore, just saying. Uh, Watch it out. Won't be, it won't be in your house. It's, it'll be either that or the Captain Marvel statue. One of them. <laughs> one of them's coming home with me. Those those will be in somebody else's house. Yes, mine. No, that's where they will end up. Some you guy on eBay is selling Essex County for thirteen hundred dollars. 
does that come with Jeff Lemire? Because holy <laughs> shit, thirteen hundred dollars! Wow, you could get two sideshow statues for that, or a prime one, or thing. one prime one, prime one, yeah. The uh, the Horizon Zero Dawn statue that we would like. Oh, oh man, so beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, I have, uh, John, I haven't read Blackjack, but I know Omar has. Oh, I love Blackjack. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Blackjack is one of my favorite, uh, Tezuka t- uh, titles. It's, uh, I love, oh, what is her name? Pinoco, the little girl, her little, his little sidekick. Yeah. Oh, that title's so great. Holy crap, though. You talk about books that are out of print. Man, those things. And I remember on my website, when I had a website, I had a contest to give away the hardcovers, the limited edition hardcovers. And I had a chance to give away my soft covers. I'm like, shit, I should have kept the damn hardcovers and gave away the soft covers. That was years <laughs> ago, though. Good Lord. One, seven, eight years ago. Here's a question <laughs> from Beto. You think Helsing hardcover will go out of print? Should I sell trade paperback? Yeah, man. It, it'll, it'll go out of stock for sure. I don't think I don't it'll think- go out of print. Yeah. I don't help isn't as popular as Berserk, right? And people have been looking for this Berserk. I don't I, would I don't say think I've ever stumbled into a group that has said, man, Helsing needs to come back in a deluxe edition. The anime is more popular than the manga for Helsing. Because a lot of people love the anime. So and it's only three books. It's only gonna be three hardcovers, so that's easy enough to reprint. So I don't think it'll go anywhere. Well, we have Gabe in the chat, but not on the show. What happened? Did Gabe get arrested for driving while using his phone? <laughs> um, we had another question. Let's see. Uh, both. People love that Helsing, the first series, even though it's terrible. They really like it. And the Helsing Ultimate OVAs are fun, too. Uh, I like the first series, really. Yeah, yeah. The second series was solid. Like the, second, the ultimate was cool because it literally was one manga per episode, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, ten uh, ten hour adventure because it was like an hour long episode. Yep, yep. Ice pulled over Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we're actually at the previews part of the show. All right, do your thing, Jess. I don't know how to do it. It's always I, Gabe. I, 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 got, I got you. I you got it? it? Okay, you, yeah, do it. you do it. I got the cells if you got if you don't want to do or you got the cells. I have Jess. the cells, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Geo, make it yeah. so. Yeah, can you? Yep, just a sec. Can you see the previews? Yep. Okay, so this you is... Make, you make them slightly bigger? <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. So this is previews for this week. That you will be able to get at our sponsor's website, instocktrades.com. Uh, we're going to start with Image Comics. They got 100% from Paul Pope. Trade paperback. Uh, Dead Eyes, Trade Paperback Volume 1. And that's about it. Yeah, only two books. Uh, from Dark Horse Comics, we've got a couple books here. Apocalypta Girl and Area for the End Times, or however you say that, uh, hardcover. I reviewed got... that. Yes, you did. How is yeah, it? It's really cool. Oh, I liked it. The, I, the art grew on me. It's really, this is the, I think the first printing was in 2016. This is the hardcover printing. Mm. Uh, is it something I should get? It's, the art is very independent, dude. I don't know if, I don't know if you'll dig it. Okay. Like, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything about you, but. I know it, what you're saying. It's very, very independent. Speaking so of it. independent, uh, BPRD 1946 to 1948, the trade paperback version. Uh, Disney Mulan's Adventure Journal Palace Secrets trade paperback. Oh, I can't wait for that movie. Looks really cool. Uh, Disney Pixar Onward Story, 
movie in comics hardcover. And this, which I know a lot of people are going to get, Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite Deluxe Limited Edition Hardcover Volume 1. Nice. And uh, how do you say this? Y-R-D? Word. 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 Wired? Wired? I, I, don't, I don't know. I was just Weird. kidding. Maybe uh, Word. Trade Main paperback. Talk. Cool. Uh, from IDW. Corto Maltese, a Ballad of the Salty Sea. Uh, Crow and Hack slash the crossover thingamajig. This is the trade paperback volume one. Descendants, Fright at Museum. Uh, Embarrassment of Witches, graphic novel volume one. Marvel Action, Captain America, uh, Captain America, <laughs> Captain Marvel, Volume 1, Catastrophe. Get it? Because of the cats. And Uncle Scrooge, uh, Trade Paperback, Volume 12, Cursed Cell Phone. Well, we got a super chat, guys. Oh, okay, just a sec. Yeah. I can't see it, but thank you, whoever it might be. Promised 1-1 one, one for... Five bucks. Great video as always, guys. Do you think Marvel will release Age of X Men story from last year in OHC like they are doing with War of Realms? Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. What's Thank the you. answer? Jess, I'm gonna let you, being our X Men <laughs> guy of the group, and Marvel guy, I'm gonna let you take this one. <laughs> Uh, I think, well, for one thing, War of the Realms started as a OHC, but then they decided, you know what? We just keep adding miniseries and miniseries, very similar to what they did with Absolute Carnage. They said, let's just go ahead and make it an omnibus. I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, there is a good chance because they're releasing X-Men Disassembled in oversized hardcover, the way it was originally supposed to be when it was solicited uh, on the fourth quarter. I don't know if a lot of you know that or not. So um, that run, which was written by multiple writers, right, will be released in oversized hardcover. And that run, issue 10, leads into Age of X-Men. So, yes, there is a strong chance. Mm -hmm. How about that? Okay. There you go. There we go. Uh, also from IDW, Transformers, Ghostbusters, Trade Paperback Volume 1, Ghost of Cybertron. Yes, uh, sir. They're, they're asking the chat if this is a hardcover. I think it's a hardcover, right? No, it's a trade paperback. Trade? Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, it's a trade. Uh, DC Comics. All right, from DC Comics, we got Batman White Knight Deluxe Edition hardcover. And this is... As good as it's going to get, if you like White Knight, it's only going to be in a deluxe edition. They're not going to be omnibizing it or absoluting it. Sean Murphy's on record as saying, uh, and Cursed Knight, <clears throat> Cursed Knight will not be released with this in omnibus form. The best thing that's going to happen is these deluxe editions. Honestly, I think, ah, never mind. I'm not Sean Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing wrong with that either. You know, I'm, I'm gonna keep quiet. Getting... I'm gonna keep quiet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jess, we got a message from Gabe saying, "Let me in." I don't see him on here though. Oh, okay. Just a sec. Do you see him? I can't see anything. I'm blind. Yeah, I, I can't see anything either. Okay, there we go. Yo, what up, dudes? Yo, we, we can't see you. We can hear you. Yeah, because I'm eating. You don't want to watch me eat. First time I've eaten all day. Oh, look at you, man, starving yourself. That's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said in the chat earlier, I'm eating a homeless baby, and it's delicious. Um, we, we don't actually need to hear you then either. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate we everybody. <laughs> we don't like watching you eat, but we love hearing you chew. ASMR, I'm not even chewing, uh, Omni Bros. Delicious. Nice. I'm excited for that Jack of Fables. I know a lot of people that have been getting the deluxe editions are too, because it does exist. Uh, it's finally here. Keep, keep talking, because my battery's going to die. Let me get the charger. Hold on. 
Oh man, you put me on the spot. I got nothing else to say. Uh, I love comic books. <laughs> no, so <laughs> you without something to say. Shut huh? up, you. <laughs> I saw your comment on my video. You also <laughs> enjoy the sound of my voice. So we have um, Fables had a deluxe editions, right? And granted, a lot of them are out of print, or a couple of them are really expensive. Right, and, we, and we know Sorry. DC doesn't ever plan on reprinting those. When we thought we were going to go the Absolute route, but now they're going the Compendium route. Yay, Thank compendium. God that Absolute did not happen. Thank God. I would rather an absolute than a freaking compendium, but hey, we'll we'll get into that conversation another day. But Jack of Fables, this is the finale of that run and finishes off to Jack of Fables. This has all the way to fifty, so we'll see. Uh, no, that Uncanny X Men or the Uncanny X Men hardcover that I saw solicited is going to be the first ten issues. That leads, like I said, directly into the Age of X Men. I don't know how they'll collect the rest of the Rosenberg run, but that that's the first set of uh, stories. The one that, uh, yes, Rosenberg did, but he was also with uh, Kelly Thompson and Ed Bryson. Right, Jess? Bryson? Bryson. 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 Oh, my God. I'm done. Never mind. I'm done for now. How do you like that Uncanny X-Men run, Uncanny Omar? I liked one issue. Okay, perfect. And then... Was it the issue, was it the issue again where uh, Maggot comes back? Because that's the one I love. What? No! Oh, you're, I love the you're, idea. You're like, a goddamn monster. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, I like the idea that went into three creators that I really enjoy writing one X Men story, but it just didn't work. Oh, three like, three writers writing one story didn't work. That's never happened. Like AVX. No, well, no, I mean, but it has worked. I mean, look at Fifty Two, right? If each one of them had focused on a certain part. Sure, I mean, like the the uh, the, the webheads. The webhead doing that made the Spider Man run where it was like four yeah. or five different people. But each, that each out. I don't know. It was just all over the place. So I don't know. All right. Uh, Oracle Code. Okay. That is yeah. the first 50% off book. Oracle Code? And that, I'm sure it's about Oracle. Is it a yeah. kid's book? I assumed it was a kid's book just yeah, based on the format. It's part of the uh, graphic novel young adult line. Yeah, it's the same as that, that that Catwoman one that came out not too long ago and stuff like that. Uh, we're also getting Robin Year One trade paperback uh, new edition of it, and Wonder Woman Spirit of Truth hardcover. Ooh, that's a good book. Is it? Yes, Bruce Tim and, and uh, Alex Ross. It's in it's in the Absolute uh, Superheroes book. Mm. Okay, and, that's what I thought. Yeah, and so I. I, they may be re-releasing them in hardcover form singularly now. So that's DC Comics. Let's move on over to Marvel Comics. You got oh, Black oh, Widow. Buckle in, everybody. Buckle yeah. in. Marvel Comics. You got Black Widow postcard book hardcover. You've got Black Widow, uh, the Wade and Savney Complete Collection trade paperback. Everyone needs to buy that book. I agree. I, I agree. Best Good Black stuff. Widow story. Yep. Uh, Marvel Comics 1000 hardcover edition. I don't know if that's OHC or not. I don't, I don't no idea. Man, I think it's going to be for that price, though. It better be. <laughs> now, I know. Everybody's excited about X Men and Uncanny X Force, but but Power Pack guys, Power Pack classic omnibus <laughs> along with the DM variant. <laughs> let's make let's make that volume two. Let's make that volume two happen. And those both are fifty percent off. Look nice. at that! Look at that! See, Show Power some love Pack. For Power there, Pack. There's my boy Derek. I, Derek knows what's up. Power Pack was where it was at in the eighties. They told you they had a house. I'll never forget the house ad that were like, if somebody touches you where you don't want to be touched, Whoa. go what? tell an adult. You don't remember Wait. the go, you don't remember the house ads with Power Pack and Spider Man? Like, if you're touching a weird spot, go tell an adult what happened. Well, somebody told that to rob him, and he was hanging out with uh, Batman as a little boy, right? Uh, <laughs> that's another. Know? That's another episode. That's for Bat Saturdays with Jess. Batter days in the back cave. Ooh, my bad, nerd. All right, what's next? Here we have uh, oh, power that... pack. 
people you mean clearance have... power pack soon? Yeah. <laughs> this next one, uh, ever since we started Omni Bros, people have been asking about this damn book, so I'm really happy that it's coming out. Uh, <laughs> so the Uncanny X Force <laughs> Omnibus reprint. I am and happy for that book too. That is fifty percent off. And I mean that no, in the people nicest can stop way. Asking us. People can I mean, stop asking us. <laughs> I mean that in the nicest way, but yeah, ever since day one, hey, when is Uncanny X Force coming back? I'm like, I, I don't know. Now you know. Who would have known? This is definitely one of the biggest whales to to be reprinted ever so far. Right. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. I uh, I did a video comparison on my channel, and one of my favorite things they did is under the dust jacket. Yeah. The, this time around, it's uh, it's black instead of white. The original one is white with the silhouette of the team, and this Ooh. one is uh, black with the silhouette of the team. I thought that was a really cool twist. I like the white one a lot. I think I'm yeah. good with that. I'm a big fan of that one, too. Uh, also coming out, Web of Black Widow, trade paperback. It's a good story. I like it. This behemoth of a box set, uh, X-Men Children of Adam hardcover box set slipcase. Okay. Now, here's the deal. We're all done with 50% off books, but this thing is 45% off. If you've got your 2% discount code, which means it's 275, mm -hmm. tack on that 2% discount code, it goes down to 265, which is practically half off. And that, the, as Omar said, that thing weighs a ton. You order that, it's free shipping, and they pack it like a boss, IST does. So if you want this thing, it's almost 50% off with your loyalty discount. I'm gonna, and you get free packing peanuts, too. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add something to that really quick. Uh, Please do. What you guys need to do is just go ahead, and you can thank me later, but... Buy Power Pack Omnibus and then get that 2% off on this box set. Then you'll have two of the big... Oh, yeah, and Uncanny X-Force too if you want to. Unless you already got the 2%, but if you're needing that 2%, that's I think that's something we've always suggested is buy it day of you know one of these books and then get the bigger item with the extra 2% off. Um, I will say that this thing is low in stock already. Yeah. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying it's gonna sell uh -oh. out. It's not gonna. It's gonna go out of print. But everybody remembers the Infinity Gauntlet box set. That thing was gone in a week. The mm -hmm. Uncanny Omar. I'm just. I'm just. I know that uh, there's a lot of people that want it. There's a lot of people, but it's just one of these books. I don't. It's one of these things. I don't think they're. It, it will be expensive to reprint. So once it's out of print, there's gonna be a lot of like meetings. I'm sure. Should we? Should we do this? So if you want it, you know, yep. it's just, exp I know it's expensive though. So it's a, it's hard to, for me to be like, Oh, you go get a three, but even, you know, even at a discount. Yeah. Uh, Boom studios. <clears throat> I, I know I can't Freddie. I know I can't. Uh, ben, uh, Ben 10 original graphic novel, Manchester mystery, grass Kings trade paperback volume three. Something is Killing the Children, Volume 1, Discover Now. I've heard good things about that. I haven't it's read like, it now. It's from James Tinney on the 4th. It looks pretty cool. That's it for yeah, Boom. And my favorite section. The, Before we get to the worst section, let's address oh, this. Sorry. The uh, worst section. What's wow. the code for the two percent? That is, there's no code for two percent. That's your loyalty discount for having bought from IST within the past eight days. Mm -hmm. So that's what Omar was saying. To get the two percent, order fifty dollars worth of something, get the two percent, then you can buy the box set for forty-seven percent off. Is the two percent really worth the extra, like you know, fifty, sixty dollar, like you know, buy-in for it? Uh, I always love the two percent, so it's a personal choice, I think. Well, mm -hmm. no, I'm just saying, if you're going to spend sixty bucks to try and get two percent, I don't know if that two percent is going to equal out that that fifty dollars that you would just you know spend anyways to get the box set. 
Well, well, you, think, oh. you think about it like getting a free omnibus almost though, right? Like a almost like a free book. If you're if you're gonna spend the money anyway, that's the way I always yeah. fight in my head. But I have a very fucking collected like uh, obsession mentality, so do not ever go away only, do what I do. It's only if you want the books. Yeah. If you want the books, then it's worth it. But I mean, I wouldn't force myself to spend fifty bucks on books I don't want for two percent. Oh, it doesn't have to be fifty bucks, right? You could get like a ten dollar trade paperback and still get it, right? Yeah, you can get a ten dollars to trade paperback, pay for shipping, and then get that two percent. Yeah, You're absolutely. I think right. that I think that that will wash it out. That that will balance it out. I think so. Yeah. Either way. So, it's it's all up to you know whatever. I well, so, Jess, this is a good question. Are you going to get it? I am eighty uh, percent yes right now. Eighty percent yes. What's the twenty percent that you need? Uh, Tomorrow, just seeing it live. <laughs> that <Probably. push> over. <laughs> just seeing the design. Uh, Dave K, can you highlight on Dave K's message? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if they purposely did this, but all of Marvel's Omnis that were once ninety nine ninety nine are now a hundred dollars. So. I don't know if that was on purpose or if they're just being greedy, wanting that extra penny from people. But hey, that penny adds to a lot of. Well, I'm sure it's at least one penny more expensive to print it than it was eight years ago, whenever that book came out. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I'm sure it's a little more than that. Yeah. Uh, but that you know that pushes places like In Stock Trace that have it fifty percent off, and then people have that ship free shipping. Because before, if it has to be fifty dollars or more, right? If it was ninety nine ninety nine, it would not be fifty dollars or more. And then you're like, oh man, oh, I, I see what a couple of pennies. Yeah, see, Mitch knows what's up. He's a mathematician. Well, all right, Geo, keep on rocking. Let's go to the cool section. You can buy a ten dollar manga and get that two percent off. That's how you work it, Jess. Right. Uh, we're getting Aria manga masterpiece omnibus volume five. Adi Fureta, I heart Isekai, volume two. Astrid Accidental Magic hardcover graphic novel or the soft cover. Bake Monogatari Volume 3. Uh, let's see. Big Nate Blow the Roof Off trade paperback. Billy's Boots hardcover. Breathers Number 2. Breathers Number 2. Cover B. Cosmic Commandos. I have no idea what any of this is. Everything is beautiful, and I'm not afraid. Uh, familiar Face hardcover. Fire Never Goes Out, Memoir in Pictures. Gal Gohan, Volume 2. Gigant, from the <laughs> same creator as Gantz. This is very risque and fan servicey. so if you're going to get it, be warned, because there is a huge parental advisory sticker on it. Just saying. Um, Goblin Girl hardcover. Ian graphic novel volume four. Johnny Hazard Sunday's archive forty four to forty six full size tabloid hardcover. Judge Dread Mechanismo Machine Law. Knights Temporal volume one. What else we got? Marginal Operation graphic novel. Monster Mayhem, Trade Paper Bag, Monthly Girls, Nozaki-kun, Volume 11. Mutt's Treasury, Hot Dogs, Hot Cats. That's cool looking. Penguin Drum, Volume 2. Plot, Trade Paper Bag from Vault Comics. Prince Bari, Volume 3 and Volume 4. Princess, Princess Ever After, Soft Cover. Relics of Youth, uh, another Rick and Morty uh, versus D&D &D. trade paperback, Volume 2. Runners, Volume 1, Bad Goods Colored Edition. And Runners, Volume 2, Big Snow Job. Still Sick Manga, Volume 2. Transparence, trade paperback. And Trent, Volume 5, Valley of Fear. 
as well as Warren T's funny comics for dirty lovers. And that's about it. Nice. Awesome, Jill. Thank you for doing that, sir. And thank you, Jess, for showing back up. Right here, dude. Oh. Uh, Scrooler, I'm just going to say De Gant is about, uh, I don't know, she's a former porn actress that gets powers and she becomes a giant lady. And the kid, a teenager, falls in love with her. It, it's weird. So, yeah. You had me at the cover. Yeah, the art is great, but again, it's... I'm a, I'm a big fan of Gantz, so... Yeah, the subject matter, it's not going to be for everybody. I get it. Well, that is... Uh, we can go over again the 50% off books. That was Oracle Code from DC. Mm -hmm. The two power pack Omnis from Marvel. Uncanny X-Force from Marvel. Yes, and at 45% off, the box set of X-Men. You know what's really keeping me from doing it is I feel it's going to do like a lot of double dipping for me. But I right, let's, talk, let's talk about that. I don't mind. Okay. About that. I don't are have the at, lost years. Is just, uh, are you at an airport, Gabe? <laughs> no, I'm at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I figured. People talking. I know. That was a bad idea for me to eat that burrito too. Oh, don't don't go like twenty four hours out eating and then pack yourself full of Mexican food. I would advise against that. Good, that's good. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. good choice. Um, okay, so you have if you have X Men Silver Age Volume One, X Men Silver Age Volume Two, Uncanny X Men Volume One. And about half of Uncanny X-Men Volume 2, Omnibus, that's pretty much what makes up the box set, right? The majority of it. What this box set has that those don't are about 500 pages of, like, the material from where the X-Men were during those years, the lost years. Um, what this has is also the chronological way of reading these, right? Not that there's nothing, anything wrong with the... The Omnis, I think the Omnis do a phenomenal job. I love them, but this is just a one place to have them all in one sitting. So it, it's a question I get. And if you don't know what X Men we're talking about, because there is, a, it is a little confusing. Um, so the X Men Omnibus One and Two, those are Silver Age Omnis. That Silver Age means like when the X Men first started out in like 1963. It's the Stan Lee stuff, right? Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Roy um, Thomas. Yeah. Eventually, Roy Thomas and Neil Adams, and then the series got canceled, right? Because it just wasn't selling. So it then became a series of reprints uh, from '67 all the way to '93, and then Marvel brought it back with giant size, and that—that's what's known as the Uncanny Years or the Bronze Age. So I have no idea what the odds of those X-Men uh, volumes one and two, the Silver Age stuff being reprinted, is going to be. Mainly just because, you know, in, in almost the year that I've been talking to David, I've gotten, and he's never said either way, but I've gotten the impression that those Silver Age books just didn't sell as well. Hmm. And it, and there's a lot of truth to that because, I mean, anybody that's been in this omnibus game for a long time knows that that Incredible Hulk, and I know a lot of people want that reprinted, that's going to be a tough sell because Incredible Hulk set at liquidation prices for over a year. Oh, wow. Meaning that the book was like, 27 to 30 dollars because nobody was buying it same thing with iron man one now i think by the time they got the thor two and thor three those books had a smaller print run but there's those first few books they just didn't i don't know they just didn't sell well the and not as well as modern comics now i, I you, think it's a so i think it's a silver age issue we can get into that but i just don't think anything silver age really sells look at the uh, golden age slash silver age dc on the buses right yeah, I, and honestly, I don't know. If they reprint them now, maybe they would sell. We have a bigger audience that want these books that have never had the chance to buy them. So perhaps. So Isn't, isn't some of that stuff – here's a good thing with, with this. If you want to get this box set, I will, I will champion it on this side of things. If you're not a fan of big omnibuses – and you know, I'm sure there's a chance that people watching Omni Bros Live don't exactly like 
the big omnibuses, and they're hard to find. Uh, so if you like hardcovers, this is a good. This is probably your only opportunity to really get these in a really nice hardcover set. Outside of maybe the Epic Collection line and waiting for the Epic Collections to, to cover this material, this is probably about your best bet to really get that early Silver Age X Men, Jim, Jim Lee, sorry, uh, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby stuff as well. Now, with am Mi- I right about that? Is that correct, or am I just talking on my ass? I don't. No, no, you're, you're, you're you are absolutely right about that. Now, with those Epics, Marvel has sworn that they will keep Volume Ones in stock as Evergreen. As often right. as they can. They have this, not, this covers they, a lot more than volume one. This covers yeah, yeah, like yeah, volume yeah. one all the way up to like everything. So, it, but the problem with that is like, yeah, they can keep a volume one in stock, but what about volume two when it goes out of print? I don't even know if it's still in print, honestly. And so, the epic, the epic collections are, are are put out out of order. You know, they yeah. go like one, 25, 6, 12, 11, 10, you know, that kind of stuff. Not a number. So but who yeah. knows how long you're going to get a full run of that stuff anytime soon. Right. So it, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about you know. Re- every time I know that we've talked on the phone and we've talked about Silver Age, it was a big. It was a big like, yeah. It's just you know, it was a tough sell to begin with, and if it's a tough sell to begin with, sometimes that's harder to get reprinted. But like I said, it's 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 different times. The, he said the same thing about Daredevil Omnibus by Bendis, and I remember ta- that was our very first conversation, and I was like, yeah. I even knew the guy. I was like, yeah, David, but we have a different, like, you know, p- people now are buying more. There's a whole new genre of people, like, just a whole generation that are buying these books. And he's like, yeah, you're right. So, ugh. so then, and you that, know, that Bendis, I, I was looking at it the other day when we were doing the readathon. That Bendis omnibus came out like 10 years ago. That thing's been out of print forever. It's been a long so, time. Same with this X Men run. This X Men stuff has been out of print forever, and yeah, in that ten years, this 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 format, this side of the hobby, this niche has definitely grown larger and larger and larger. And this does have the untouchable nature of I can't have it, I want it. So it getting reprinted would actually, you know, put that out and help as well. Yeah. Uh, so Scrooler has a, a a question, right? The OHC question. Yeah, so let's talk about this because this is something that I was commenting on my channel. Uh, wait, wait, so- wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Uh, did we shout out Justin Page for his super chat? Oh, no. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go back to that real quick and then we'll come back to this. Yeah. Thank super you, big thank you to, to Justin Page. Great guy. Uh, promised, promised one. Everybody else in the chat who's just really been supporting the show. We, we were talking about this kind of behind the scenes recently and we have seen a wonderful like support monetarily which isn't necessary and i in all my blankness here not being on camera sorry but i do want to express wholeheartedly on behalf of everybody here it's not necessary it's it's totally appreciated more than you know uh for some of us in the group that extra money is uh is is incredibly incredibly helpful for us Mm -hmm. so thank you everybody now, in the past, and in the future, those super chats do not go unappreciated. Well said. So, thank you, Justin. Justin's a good, good guy too. Uh, so, to an- to answer the question of OHC, so here's the thing: when they set the standard of this book, what was the very first one? Was it uh, Civil War? I think, right? Uh, no, it was Gabe? Marvel Firsts. It was Marvel's first. That was the very first box set. Yeah. Okay, whatever the first box set was. That's when they decided we have to print this at this at this format at this cost. Because I will say, yes, it would be so badass if these were oversized hard covers. But Jesus Christ, the price would be eight hundred to a thousand dollars. And it'd be five hundred pounds. And no but my mailman would be like, get the shit out of here, man. Back at your <laughs> own self. Come and pick it up at the post office. But Do I'm, you guys I'm- remember when an Infinity Gauntlet box set came out and I ordered like twenty of them for the store? Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, craziness. Uh, yeah, people people hate you for doing that. Like the mail service. So. The mail service, I'm sure, does because they come in big giant boxes each. It's not like they're packed into several boxes. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, but I'm 100 percent serious. If they were to do this, if they were to make it into an OHC, you're talking at least at least 800 dollars for a box set at the very. Oh, least. dude, 
they would have to double it. It would have to be a thousand dollars cover price. Easy. But I'm th I'm thinking a thousand dollars just to cover that price to make the end. Yeah, because I mean that the, the cost of shipping, the paper, the just you know, I don't. Yeah, know. And the chance of it not selling too. You have to factor in the fact that some of the stuff at that price point would would sit around, and you have to price up price it up to make up for the ones that don't sell. I mean, that's yeah. just business savvy. Mm -hmm. So a thousand dollars easily, and that's just intimidating and, and unobtainable. And damn, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know how many people, you know, I don't know how many people have $500 ready to spend on this, but then you're yeah, getting I mean, two, two is asking for a lot for, for, for people, for a know? lot of people, right? Yeah. In one, yeah. in one big, and yes, it covers a lot though. So there's that whole thing, but it's a lot of money. It's it's, and then you get into that category of like, you, let me tell you something. You open a door of a thousand dollars box set. We're going <laughs> to. It's going to be bad for us collectors because the first person that does it, DC will follow through again and yep. be like, oh, well, shit, they got a thousand dollar box set. We could do it, too. We got several series. And then Marvel will release another boy. So we're not talking about a one time thing. So it, it's it's just it's I'm this is I think is, you know, as high as I want something to be in in collected edition like this. Super but this chat. is this is definitely something incredibly cool. Uh, thank you, Glenn uh, Noctor. Uh, but yeah, this this box set would be incredibly impressive to have in in your collection, sitting on the box or, or on your shelf. Um, and especially if you're a hardcore X Men fanatic like Omar, or even maybe Riley. I don't know how dedicated Riley is to get this kind of box set. But man, this thing would definitely be a crown in somebody's collection. So I could do see the appeal for it. 100%. And again, Grigo, awesome buddy, uh, or Glenn, 1000%. Thank you for that. Uh, let's, let's cover his information here as well later. I, I got it. I got the answer to that. Okay, go. Uh, so after looking closely, I realized that the yellow invincible text on volume nine was a sticker covering the original pink text. I'm just trying to figure out if this is something the publisher started doing or it was that had to have been a custom job. Every single one of those invincibles that I've seen has had a a pink. What does yours look like, Jess? It's pink. At least from the first printing that I've seen, they've all had that uh, pink label. I, am, did, it's pink? I don't even know. Really? No, 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 no. That, saying, wasn't that the change when uh, Invincible was uh, that a uh, different character took over as Invincible for a little bit? Isn't, I really, that, isn't it that one? I really can't recall. But he's saying what happened was he bought it used, and it looked mm -hmm. like somebody had put a sticker, a yellow sticker, covering up the original pink text. So I think that must have been a custom job. I don't think Image did that. but but And I'm not saying that's impossible because I have seen books, you know, actually get uh, stickers on them covering something that by mistake last minute changes right like somebody goofing up I thought, what was it yeah. it was a tra trade paperback of the fantastic four like they 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 put fan fanatic four or something and it was a sticker <laughs> up it. what was that? oh damn it and, and i remember thinking oh man i bet somebody was pissed off under quality control because yeah <laughs> the bootleg fantastic four the, fan the yeah, fanatic yeah. four yeah Matthew, thank you. A couple of oh, bucks for those Ooh. logo wheels. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Everybody also, uh, Matthew, oh, I don't know if you can do it. Sorry. Maybe we'll do it. Uh, Matthew's Instagram is awesome artwork that he does. Yeah. Dude's a good mm -hmm. artist. Good guy. Yeah, good people. Good people. Thank you. Thank you. Let me take the time to say that uh, the books that we were talking about tonight can be found at InStockTrades.com, where you can get your books up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. There's always an Omnibros Live code every quarter. Uh, order $50 or more worth of books in the United States, and it's free shipping. Uh, fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Nice. Uh, Mark Wade's run, Clarence Price. Mark Wade's run on Black Widow is our favorite Black uh, Widow collection ever. And you need to get it, Clarence. It's, it made me a Black Widow fan. I love yeah. that book. Yeah. You want to have a fun time? Pull, they're pulling elements from it into the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you highlight Mountain Dew? 
call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We have to get back to you about that. Make sure, make sure you tag Omar in a Facebook post asking. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions before we sign off? Now's the time to do it. What happened? See, I, I do have that run. What, that? I do have that run, but on my uh, tablet. Which run is this? It? Great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great run, man. Yeah. I'm going to have to borrow it from the store and read it. I haven't read it, uh, but you guys are really talking it up. It is a really good solid run. I love Chris mm -hmm. Omni. That guy is a monster maniac, dude. I love his artwork. I was a little upset because this was after the um, film Daredevil. stuff. When it came to Black Widow. Yeah, and this is also when Mark Wade left Daredevil, too. He went and did that with yeah. Samney. But the art looks great. Okay, are there any serious questions? <laughs> Everybody's yeah, question is serious. Gnome Hole Omnibus 2021. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there so many conspiracy? Guys, I'm not. Gnome Hole Omnibus 2020. We'll make that happen, man. Marvel will print it. Uh, Hoonverse review. Uh, I am... In Myself and Taylor Brown, we're going to review that book when it comes out, and we'll let you know. It's by Bendis, and we've heard good things about it, so Taylor and I, on Batterdays in the Batcave, will be reviewing it. And oh, is that the Walmart? That's, that's the Walmart series, right? That's yeah, Walmart, Walmart Batman. Omar will, Omar will be joining us in the chat to uh, yes. talk, to uh, talk trash to me. Talk trash Man, to me. I really want to read that, because I think Batman, especially if it, Bendis in early 2000s when he was doing that Daredevil crime stuff would have been perfect for Batman. So I would really like to see what 20 year difference can make on Batman with Bendis. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else we got? Any uh, questions? Did you see that both versions of the Meta Bar Barons are now out of print? Oh. Could be hard to find in the near future. Is that okay, true? so let me I take a look. Uh, can you find that out? Thanks, Gabe. I will say this: I did reach out to my contact at Humanoids because a lot of my viewers, and I think some of you guys in the Facebook group, have been asking about a reprint of the Incal. So she said. Sadly, not in the next two years. It's not gonna happen. So Ooh. that big box set that the Incal came in that was printed mm -hmm. last year sold out. That was it. And she said at least in the next two years, because they've got their calendars up for all these things. Mm. That's not gonna happen, sadly. Okay. So Meta Barons, the big old box set. I think it's beautiful. I know Omar did a video on it. It's uh it's it's still in stock at Diamond. So good, good. crisis averted. Well, Incal took a while to sell out. I remember Incal sitting around. It was like, I want to say almost almost a year before it sold out. Is, oh, excuse me. It was the Meta Barons as limited as the Incal was? Because I remember that had a big old sticker saying only like a thousand made. Yeah. But Meta, Meta Barons is at 1,500, I think. If Incal is a thousand, they're not near me. Otherwise, I'd check. Um, okay. Then I, I'm gonna get both of these things. They're gorgeous. I man. know. I know where I can. I know where I can get them. Yeah, I was gonna say Incal. I think was a year before it went out of print, and I don't know about the Meta Barons. How long it'll be? Well, M Meta Barons came out the end of December, right? Middle of December. No, I'm sorry. January in the in the January. Yeah, December January. was the FLC date for it. It was it was supposed to come out in December though. You're absolutely right. Uh, I can see when Incal came out. Give me a sec. If if that matters, if anybody cares, but I'm you know I'm happy for them because they are a small company out of France that's kind of grown big over the last uh, decade or so here in America. So I like this idea of limited editions and stuff like that. 
I've I've championed that idea forever. That I think even omnibuses, like these these bigger like premium formats, should be of a limited uh, numbering to help one sell through to create some kind of uh, a pressure to buy, Momo? and three just make it cool. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, people are gonna go broke if they do that stuff, man. Limited edition. What do you got, Jess? You know where to where find is, it. Where it's is in, it? It's in volume. Where, which one are you looking at? Okay, I know Matter Barons is fifteen hundred. What was Incal? If I you have, oh, you don't have Incal? I have the original oversized Incal. So oh, you've got you've got I the good one. That. You've got the good one. What? Uh, where is it on here? How many there are? Oh, it's There's in the a first sticker on pages, it on the left hand side. It's in the first couple. Are you on volume one or volume oh, yeah, two? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Fifteen hundred copies. Okay, that's what I thought. Maybe it's the same for the Inkle. I don't remember. I know it was. I knew it was. It, either way, it was a very small number that was actually printed on the on the box. Matthew Jess. asks if he needs a copy of Muse. <clears throat> uh, Jess and I will say yes. <laughs> I also have that book, so yeah, oh, I'll I agree. Muse. So great. Yep. You need you three Muse. Muse is fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Jess, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Fifteen fifty. Uh, huh. Chat Omni Doc, I. I will not be getting the Power Pack Omni just because I am not familiar with it at all. I have me no, neither. Cast no aspersions on anybody that wants it. I think it's great that it's out there and people are lucky that who want it, but I'm not familiar with it at all enough to get it. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I don't. That's a hard pass. I'm that, thing, get, that could be. That thing could be on fire, and I wouldn't even care. I'm gonna get Jess all drugged up. I'm gonna start Power Pack Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Glenn, Glenn is saying it was fifteen hundred and fifty copies of Incal. Yeah, there's thank 50, you, Glenn. Same with um, Meta Barons. There's fifty extra copies for the creators and retailers. I got my my um, copy's all dinged up, and I got one. But it's that pretty cool. Baltimore HC. There's an Omni number two coming out this month. Highlight, yep. and that's it. No mas. There's only yep. two. There's an interesting question you know, in the chat that we talked about earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, you can. Why don't you address this, Gabe? You know about CGC. Um, you've seen people handle CGC books. Comic Tom did a whole thing on uh, barehanded grading. Um, did you? Yeah. Get, yeah, Gabe, you want to address this and why it's okay that the guy did it that way? Yeah, so there is this this odd kerfuffle happening out there. Um, yeah, like just said, Comic Tom took over CGC's uh, Instagram during C two E two. You can go to their Instagram or wherever you can see this video up there still, probably. But the video that he's talking about is uh, Matt, who is CGC's head grader, all around great guy. Uh, I've had dinner with him plenty of times. Good people. We have. A lot of things in common personally as well uh, that I won't get into in here. But the video shows him counting the pages of a Superman number one. Okay, so he's counting the pages and he's doing it with no gloves on. And the kerfuffle is everybody, not everybody, but there's a huge amount of people who are very irked at the fact that he is not wearing gloves while counting the pages of these, of this book. Um, and what it really comes down to is it's out there in the sphere of, of grading, not just comic books, but documents in general, that wearing gloves is a bad idea for grading. One of the key points when you're grading a comic book or any type of document or paper is the tactile feel of the pages mm. the tactile feel of the pages gives you an i can help you figure out uh if there's like slight moisture added to the book like if there's like water damage uh if there is dirt on the pages if there's any kind of 
re-glossing of the book so you can actually tell you know the thickness of the pages are different on the cover because it's been re-glossed or a, a number of different things out there um so yeah so wearing gloves nobody wears gloves in there when they when they grade comics or handle comics i've handled superman number ones before barehanded no big deal i've handled lots and lots of big big books barehanded it comes down to just as long as you have clean hands nothing's going to come out of it and you don't need to grade these books or read these older books like your bart simpson millhouse <laughs> and martin using tweezers that you have to sterilize in a fire first. That is just ridiculous. And people are just over, overthinking the importance of, you know, grading books in that kind of manner. It's, it's ridiculous. Again, he is their number one top grader. Uh, he is the master grader of anything to do with comics. He is the authority of it. So there is no way that he would do anything that would compromise the handling of the book or anything like that. So there you go. What does the glove do to the paper? Why can't you use gloves? Harder and you do more damage if you have gloves on. It's just that with the glove, you can't get a feel of the paper. You can't get yeah. a feel of, you know, that the tactile feel if it's dirty, if there's been any kind of reglossing, slight bends, slight uh, creases, uh, spine stress, little things like that, that you can't really quite see with your bare eyes. But your yeah. but your fingertips will, will alert you to what's going on. That's just that's just you know a hyperboil and just people thinking that everything should be suspended animation, white gloves kind of thing. Uh, there you go. Omni Dog. Power Pack Pun Days. We read an issue a week and talk about it while eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I have more pitches. I will keep working on it. Thank I you. Love the cough syrup idea. Um, if you have any cough syrup, I will read Power Pack with you while we're drinking cough syrup. Oh, Flaming Moe's. Go on Power Pack. <laughs> what the hell? Flaming Moe's. What are you live streaming? I, I got hooked uh, on it in the army. Chad Omni Dog, I, I will consider getting Power Pack Omni and doing a review with you. That would be fun. This is uh, this is so weird listening to Jess talk to Jess. <laughs> Power pack pun day. You gotta take all the damn days of the week, Jess. <laughs> That's right. It's Power Pack Monday here on Omni <laughs> Dog's Vault, where we're talking about Power Pack, drinking cough syrup, and having PB and J's. I should have trademarked that. Try to trade. There you go. This is how I just get fucked up on NyQuil and talk about comics. <laughs> uh, question for the panel. This is, of course, an Omar question. Do you see Marvel making Luke Cage omnibus? Uh, that's tough. We didn't even get a Black Panther omnibus when the Black Panther movie came out. Uh, and I'm not putting all the black superheroes together in a one pile, but oh, way to go! If I were to, well, I'm just it's, it's just you know, <laughs> it's Black Panther, Luke Cage, like two of you, can have, you can have racist Wednesdays. How about that? Oh my god, are you serious? I'm sorry, you and your woke culture. <laughs> Here we are in racist Wednesdays with the uncanny Omar. Shut up, <laughs> Omar. Want to eat white bread? <laughs> <laughs> you all. Don't eat white bread. It's bad for you. It's all sugar. Don't eat it. I mean, we didn't so, get a uh, new Iron Fist stuff either when the show was airing, so I doubt they'll put out Luke Cage stuff. We, we didn't get Iron Fist like as far as a reprint of the reprint, yeah. Golden Omnibus. So I really, honestly, I don't know. I I, I don't think Here's the thing. Do we think that the, the viewers that watched Luke Cage that they would they would somehow go back around and pick up a my phone's about to die, pick up a Luke Cage omnibus or any Luke Cage material? No. Um I just don't I don't I don't think Luke Cage is that bankable of a character to do omnibuses. Maybe it'd be nice to get like a power uh, power man 
like run of like epics or, or, or anything like that would probably be a lot more suitable for, for, for that. So let me, let me, it's tough for me because I could easily say no, but then again, I'm thinking like four or five years ago when all these things were coming out, like we had to wait for a movie or something for these books to come out. Right. But like, but like Gabe said, I never understood that mentality anyway, because nobody ever leaving the Avengers movie is going to be like, man, I really feel like spending a hundred bucks on a big fat book. That's going to collect all these original stories. Let's yeah, go I love book. reading kids books for a hundred dollars. Right. It's, it's just doesn't happen that way, but it is a good time for Marvel to release these books like with black widow where she's getting her first omnibus. You know what? If you got a power pack on the bus, I, I I think we could get any fucking thing. Well, that's what I was gonna say. But now we've gotten to the point where Marvel is releasing things like cloak and dagger, power pack. Uh, so hell, anything's possible. So yeah, Luke Cage, sure. Maybe not in the next year or so, but perhaps. That'd be a nice clearance book for someone. Yeah. I can I can see that book getting printed over the Inhumans. Sadly, <laughs> oh dear. They, and they've tried to push the Inhumans. It's just it was never profitable. I don't I even don't, know. Is, I, is, is there even enough H? Inhumans to make a omnibus? That's what's that's that's my question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there yeah you can make. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We kn- never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. <laughs> You can yeah. get the can get older stuff. Yeah. You can get you the can older get stuff. You can get the Charles Soul stuff. The new stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a weird um that's almost like a carnage on the bus. Where you just, just threw all the ingredients into one thing. Hell yeah. You know, if Carnage can get an omnibus as much as everybody hated Carnage until he got announced in a movie, sure, we can get anything. <laughs> we can get anything. But that is Carnage though, right? Where's my where's my child of Gambit omnibus, Omar? <laughs> Never gonna happen. <laughs> If it if it happens, it'll be called a Joe Mad Omnibus, and that's even hey, even that's probably a little bit more sellable than Trial of Gambit, right. but still, then you can get that that search for or that hunt for Professor X in there too. So uh, Lionheart mentioned something. Marvel should have really put out a Black Panther Omnibus uh, when the movie came out, right? And that was actually one of the first things I talked to David about. I'm like, why didn't we get a Black Panther Omnibus? And I remember him saying, okay, so they contrary to uh, popular belief, they don't get a heads up on anything as far as the MCU. The MCU doesn't probably even acknowledge the fact that the Marvel Marvel actually makes comic books that these fucking movies are based on. Yeah, right. So they find out most of the time, like we do. So it's yeah, like it a, very compartmentalized, where one 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 division doesn't talk to the other. So when I asked him about that, he was uh, he was honest. He was like, "Yeah, we probably should have done that." And I and I know when I asked him, I'm like. We're definitely going to get one when uh, Black Panther Two comes out. He was like, "Yeah, we we totally will," <laughs> and almost like we're probably going to get two when Black Panther Two comes out. Uh, which, which run would you put in that omnibus? If we're, we're up to you, just do the Kirby stuff in a small omnibus would be awesome. See, I don't. I, to me, well, if I had to choose two. I would yeah. pick the two most accessible runs that I that I know, even though they're not my favorite, but I know it's easy to get into the character through Reggie Hudlin's run and Tanahasi Coates. Tanahi Tanahasi, right? Mm-hmm. What was that one that we reviewed and we didn't like? Was you that guys did the not Christopher like Priest one? Christopher That's Priest. Right. Priest. We, we yeah. See, I okay. like that. I love that run, but it's not for everybody because it's not easy easily accessible. You don't get to know the character until like halfway through the run. Right, it's more about the side characters, and then later on, it's more about Black Panther. Um, yeah, that's th- those are the two runs I would collect in an omnibus format. Uh, here's an interesting question: You guys have been in this game for a while. Is 2020 the most packed with omnibus for Marvel ever? Absolutely. I think this is the most omnibus is just in general, in not general. just Marvel, but yeah, yeah, everything. I mean, we're getting so much great stuff. I mean, DC's kind of pumped the brakes, but but still, even with the the lack of DC omnibus, it's still a lot more than we were getting before. Yep. And 
we're getting hopefully that Grant Morrison JLA on the bus that probably should have came out 15 years ago. Don't jinx it. And the uh, Green Arrow on the bus. That, that, that's not going to happen. Yes, it is. Here, here's something else <laughs> that has ne- this, it's it's never happened before. Is all these reprints? Yeah. It is February, and we are already talking about almost twenty reprints this year. That's that like you know before we would get two if we were lucky, and it was always yeah. the same things. And I've gone on and on about this, but I, <laughs> new X Men, new X Men, new X Men, exactly new <laughs> X Men, because I really believe David now that they were so out of touch with the community and what they wanted. They really because they don't really have any time to go and research stuff. You're making thank you, work. Omar. You know yeah, that's all you, bud. That's all no, you. No, that is not all me. That is everybody that reached out to me, you guys included. You guys were a lot of that input too when I would ask like questions. So it is a I think it's a it's a good relationship that I built with Marvel, but it's also including everybody, like what everybody else wants reprinted and things like that. So yes, if you're upset that your Fantastic Four isn't being reprinted by Hickman, you know, just wait around. It's definitely coming. It's just a matter of time. So it's a it's a big deal. It's a big big step. Now I wish DC would kind of do the same because I always say that competition is always good, especially mm-hmm. with these things. Yep. You know. So. Well said. All right, I'm out of here. I'm at three percent. I still got to drive home. Hey man, be good. It's good to see you. All right, all guys. Up. Thanks Take everybody care. in the chat. Uh, thumbs up. Subscribe. Share. Uh. If you steal our information about what's fifty percent off, at least give us credit for those of you out there. Mm-hmm. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> Peace. Bye, man. Uh... Wait, j- highlight John Conway's um, thing, if you don't mind, Jess. I I, I, don't, a print. I don't know if that's sarcasm or not because it's really difficult to tell, but. We've only had one printing of Animal Man, you know. We've it, and here's the thing: like, there's there's about ten Omnis that they're out of print right now from DC. Uh, the Secrets is out. Infinite yeah. Crisis is out for a long that, time. That's coming out. Um, JSA Volume Two, uh, Death and Return of Super. Look, go and look at Death and Return of Superman Omnibus, the new printing, right now. Go look at prices on eBay. It is insane what people yeah. are selling that stuff for. And that thing just went out of print. Now we're supposed to be getting another one, but we don't know when. Uh, so yeah, they do go out of print. It's just they don't. They also don't make as many. They don't print as many as Marvel does. Hmm. So there's there's quite a few of those books that are out of print. Uh, here's a thank you, Omar Super Chat. You're welcome. Jess, you're welcome, Justin. Justin's a great guy. And Jess, you can put that in your Social Security retirement fund. There was something in here I saw. Oh, yeah. So, yes, uh, Gio, we need to pour one out because tomorrow we were supposed to get the very first Silver Age Aquaman omnibus. Oh, shoot. That's right. I forgot about that. Canceled. Yep. (laughs) Sons of bitches. They canceled it, brother. There are things that always stay in Evergreen. Who in verse is uh, is saying Watchmen never goes out of print? That's always Evergreen. Watchmen, I don't know if the absolute is still in print or not, but Sandman will always have will always be in print. And so will yeah, and so will Watchmen. I think those are the two biggest things that they because they have to renew the IP, they will never let that go out of print. Star Wars Epics Volume 1 should be evergreen, but I don't know about the other ones. Sadly, I don't I don't I don't know if they'll reprint them or not. I'm sad that we don't have another Star Wars omnibus. I'm sad we don't have another Dr. Aphra, another uh, Darth Vader omnibus yet. I was hoping we get some more, but I don't. I haven't heard anything yet. Um, Killing Joke is on his 56th printing. You are not joking. Killing Joke is there forever. And DC's uh, new Sandman box set. Have you all seen that yet? The picture of that? No. It makes the, me one, the one that has the black label stuff at the bottom? Yeah, it makes me sad to see Vertigo gone and it's black label now. Yep. So sad. But you know. I think that's gonna happen with um uh Transmetropolitan. 
Because that's out of print, too. I don't know if they'll bring those back. I'm I'm betting that they'll probably do an omnibus of Trans Metropolitan before bringing those absolutes back into print. Oh, well, I mean, like the logo, you won't see Vertigo anymore either. Right, right. And I'm thinking when they do Fables, when these new compendiums or whatever comes out, um, those will probably be Black Label as well. Okay, it's about that time. Call it, yes. Because we love you. We've stayed on 40 extra minutes answering questions. Mm -hmm. The day has to come to an end. And I'm calling it right now. Peace and love, but the show has to end. We can geek them. Where can they find you? You can find me on my channel, or we can geek them talking about anime, comics, manga, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Subscribe if you can. Yeah. Halls, statues, gaming, I don't know. Whatever I feel like talking about that day. Whatever I feel like. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Uncanny Omar. Where can they find you? And what are you up to tomorrow night? Tomorrow, uh, my co-host Wonder Maddie and I are reviewing Old Reader, New Reader. Um, no, we're not reviewing that. That's our show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're reviewing Friday Bad. <laughs> something Friday was Bag-Bad. off. I, I I gave a shout out to Geo's uh, channel on my video. When was it Saturday or something? And I said, "Go check out my buddy Geo's channel." A geeking week, dumb shit. Wait, no, it's a geeking week. <laughs> uh, English is my second language, guys. Quit busting. No, all right. Quit leaning on that. You can find me Omni Dog on Omni Dog's Vault on YouTube and on Instagram Omni Dog's underscore Vault. So please leave us a like, subscribe, and comment. We respond to comments, and you'll see us here again on Thursday night. Peace and love. Thank you to IST. Thank you to the chat. Thank you to our viewers. Peace and love. Peace and love. Good night, everybody.